In this lesson, we're looking at two-way frequency tables discussing joint, marginal, and conditional frequency, as well as quantitative and categorical data. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's take a look at quantitative and qualitative or categorical data. Quantitative data, if you think about the word quantity, is expressed with numbers and measurements. And some examples are weight, volume, distance, test scores, age, and temperature. So data that is expressed with numbers. Qualitative or categorical data cannot be expressed with numbers. And examples would be colors, um, flavor, music type, um, a type of book, a make of a car, so anything that cannot be expressed with numbers. However, you can use numbers to count the frequency of qualitative or categorical data. For this example here, we're going to take a look at each item and identify whether it is quantitative or categorical data. So for A, we have closed or open. What do you think? That will be categorical data because it cannot be expressed with numbers. The colors blue, brown, and green. Categorical, of course. Uh, C, 7 feet, 13 feet, and 2 feet. Quantitative, because we have numbers here. Seasons of the year. That would be categorical. What do you think about bear population? Quantitative, because we're talking about a number of bears. Attendance at a sporting event. Again, quantitative, because we're talking about how many people are at a sporting event. And worker salaries, of course, that would be quantitative because money, of course, um, that's the number. For our second example here, we're simply going to just fill out this table and then use the information on this table to analyze this data a little more. It says 149 elementary students were asked to choose whether they prefer math or English class. The data were broken down by gender. So we have 42 males that prefer math class, so 42 males for math, 47 males that prefer English, so English at 47 males. Um, we're going to go ahead and add 42 plus 47, that gives us 89. Next, we have 35 females that prefer math class, so 35 females for math, and then 25 females for English, 25 here. Adding the total of females, 25 plus 35, that is 60. And then we're going to add um, males and females that like math here. So 42 plus 35 is 77. Males and females that like English. We can say all individuals uh, that like English here. And 89 plus 60 is the total. So the total of males and females all together. So we have filled out this table. Now we're looking at joint and marginal relative frequencies. Joint frequency to find that, or joint relative frequency, we find that by dividing the number in the cell or in each cell by the grand total. So if you recall, the grand total was 149, and we're going to divide that by the number in each cell. So it was 42 males that like math, so we divide 42 by 149, and we get 0.282. Next, we had um, 47 males that like English. Again, dividing by 149, we get 315. And then the, um, next, we're looking at the female. Um, so 35 divided by 149, 235. And then 225 divided by 149 for females that um, like English is 0.68. So joint relative frequency we could say it's on the inside of the graph here. All right, we're enclosed. So that's our joint relative frequency. Now let's take a look at marginal relative frequency. We find that um, by dividing the row or column total by the grand total. And if you think marginal relative frequency, think about margin, like the margin of your paper. Um, it is on the edge of the paper. So it would be all of your totals here, all right? And we're still going to divide by the grand total of 149. So we had 77 uh, males and females that like math, and we divide that by 149 to get 0.517. A total of 72 
males and females are like English. 72 divided by 149, we get 483. Now we're looking at the total here. So the total males, 89. So we divide that again by 149. Next, female total, 60 divided by 149. And then our total overall was 149. And we divide that and we should always get one for our total right here. So um, joint relative frequency, it's in the joint, it's in the, it's in the inside of the graph here. And marginal is on the outside. Now think about the margin of your paper. Now we're going to take a look at conditional relative frequencies. And when you think about the word conditional, the root word would be condition. And so uh, looking at this data, it would have to meet certain conditions. So we're not simply dividing everything by uh, the overall total. So conditional relative frequency compares a frequency count to the marginal total that represents the condition of interest. So depending on what the question is asking for, we will either divide by 89, 60, 77, or 72. So let's look at these uh, problems here, or these questions. It says, what percentage of students who prefer math are, fem are male? So students that prefer math uh, that are male. And so we're looking at the total amount of students. So students that prefer, students who prefer math that are male. So out of the total amount of students, that would be out of 77. So we would divide 42 by 77. That gives us 0 0.55 or 55%. Next, what percentage of students who prefer math are female? So again, we're looking at the percentage of students. So math, female, that would be 35 out of the total amount of students. Again, that is 77. So we get 0 0.45, which is of course 45%. And we notice here that that gives us 100% here if we add them together. Part C, what percentage of male students prefer math? And so we're looking at only male students for the total amount. And we're looking at male students that like math or prefer math. That would be 42. So 42 out of 89, because those are our male students. Um, so 42 divided by 89 is 0.47, which is 47%. Next. What percentage of female students who prefer math? So looking at females, 35 that prefer math. So 35 out of 60, that is 0.58 or 58%. So we have used conditional relative frequency to get these percentages here. The last problem here I would like for you to try on your own. It says members of the Westover High School Choir were asked when given the choice between romanticism or gothic style singing, which style they preferred to sing for state competition. The data was broken down by gender. And so fill out the frequency table for part A and then answer um, those four following questions. So go ahead and pause the video and try this problem on your own. All right, so go ahead and check your answers. Hopefully you got them correct. Um, look at the frequency table as well as each part of the question. Uh, if you didn't get one correct, just keep the video paused for a little longer and go back and see why you may have missed that question. But hopefully you got them correct. All right. All right, we've reached the end of our lesson. I want to thank you for learning with me. Some related videos are the basic statistics overview as well as measures of center and spread. If you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, I want to thank you for learning with me.